Hi everyone. Hi everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was just having some little de technical difficulties here, and obviously couldn't even speak right now. So, hello, 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 hello. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is well. This is Marie with Just Gorgeous TV. You will let's talk, keep it real, and move forward. Not sure if you checked out our segment from last week. Our topic last week was God is calling. So, not sure if you guys are doing your due diligence in liking, sharing, and sharing. But if not, it's all good, right? Let it go forth by the way the Lord, however way he sees fit. But this week, I am going to talk to you about healing. Yes, 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 yes. Let me kind of clear this out the way here. Our topic tonight is about healing because, of course, <sighs> right? Let me just take a deep breath there because the world is in need of healing, right? We, as his children, are in need of healing. Relationships are in need of healing. Families are in need of healing. Marriage are in need of healing. Our personal and professional lives are in need of healing. I mean, from losses throughout our lives all the way up until today. And of course, the world, the world today right now is in dire need of healing. And guess what, y'all? Regardless, pain points will always be in our lives. And it can definitely hinder us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And don't I know about that? And I'm sure some of y'all that's going to be watching this video is going to say, uh-huh, we sure do know about that, right? And of course, what happens when we start to feel these things, our output in life starts to look a little a little dim. You know, it's a little it's a little negative. We start to feel, you know, hopeless. We start to feel oppressed. We start to feel depression. We start to feel all these negative things because guess what, y'all? Healing in need of healing is absolutely critical right now. It's definitely 911 right now. And guess who is lurking who loves all that? Ooh, the enemy, right? That's where the enemy resides. He resides in the mind, the battle of the mind. That battle is absolutely real. So not sure if you've ever had to battle in the mind, but if you did, you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about. And I am just going to kick us off in the book of Hebrews today, okay? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, it reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So that brings me back to the topic of today's Wisdom Wednesday, healing, right? Jesus was healing over 2,000 years ago when he was here on earth. Miracles, healing the blind, healing the sick, healing the leprosies. I mean, so my friends, today Jesus still continue to heal. But my question is, do you believe and have faith that he still is? Do you? Right. And let me kind of take you over to the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26, because this will kind of lighten up things as to what we need. Right. Because people are like, OK, Marie, so if you're saying that faith and believing in Jesus Christ and I'm looking for a miracle, I'm looking to be healed. I mean, all of us, including myself, all of us have asked these things. And these questions are and concerns are very much valid. But can I ask you, my friends, do you have a personal relationship, an intimate relationship with your Lord and Savior, who is Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Because there are requirements that the law requires of us to follow and obey guidelines. There are requirements in our job descriptions for us to conduct, right? And to see if we have the necessary skills in order to perform those duties. There are requirements in a relationship. There are prerequisites in, in, in job applications, right? There's a pre-screening. You know, in everything, prerequisites, there's requirements, there's descriptions. So, my friends, it's the same thing in God's kingdom. God has prerequisites. He has requirements. And if you don't have a personal relationship with him and you are in dire need of healing and this world is in dire need of healing, we need to go back. We need to come back to the one who created us. 
Now listen really quickly what the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 has to say. It reads, and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Whoa. Okay, first we were talking about Hebrews 13, chapter uh, chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if Jesus was healing over a couple of thousand years ago or 2,000 years ago, why would he not heal us today? Because when we look at the book of Exodus, he's talking about children. If you listen to my voice, who I am the Lord, your God, and you are going to do the things that are right in my eyes, right, his sight, and if you give your ears, meaning if you listen to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. For I am your Lord thy God. Remember my, my topic last week says God is calling, right? So God is calling, and now it just kind of like flows over to healing. Trust me, I do not want to talk about healing today. I had a whole nother topic in mind. I was going to talk about Jezebel spirits, okay, because they are very real, and they exist everywhere, but this is what he put on my heart to share. And my friends, when you read Exodus chapter 15, 26, again, God has prerequisites. He has requirements. He says, my children, if you listen to me and know, and do the things that are right in my eyes and keep all my commandments, I will heal you, right? There are many factors that can influence our healing. Do you know what those are? And, and, and trust, I'm not like the smartest person. It's the Holy Spirit and every other I study. And I've watched, you know, I don't know how many sermons I've watched to compile some information to have a, a, a full understanding of, of being able to transcribe this and to share it in the most, you know, layman's terms as possible. But of course, they're his words, not my words. But there are many factors out there, my friends, that can influence our healing. What are, what are some of those factors? Are you carrying around bitterness in your heart right now? Is there something that's causing you not to forgive someone that has hurt you, backstabbed you, you know, left you or broke you down to a point of no return, right? Is there rebelliousness in you? Are you involved in things that are not of God? Because I will declare and decree that witchcraft, okay? Voodoo, all that stuff that is not a God. Being in those occults that do things for the father of lies, that is not of God. And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that any weapons that we form against this video for speaking my truth, your truth, Lord, shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Because many people think that because they're white witches, that they're good. No. Witchcraft is witchcraft. I will tell you that right now boldly. And they, many of them have came against me, but God, because my father, God will always protect his children. Okay. So there are, are many factors. So the lives of our forefathers can also have an influence and impact because there are generational, okay, curses and blessings. There are generational curses and blessings. Okay. And doctors tells you that there's her hereditary diseases, right? No, in the spiritual world, we call those curses or blessings, right? So it is very important to deal with the things that comes down from our bloodline, to understand the generations. In the book of Matthew, before Jesus came, he was the 14th, the 14th generation before Jesus came. That's from Abraham all the way to David. And then here comes Jesus, right? And, um, and we need to understand and know how to forgive, set to be set free. We need to call upon the name of Jesus and have that authority because he does give us that authority to speak boldly and command evil to flee from us. Yes, he does. And we have to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us 
you know, of what we confess and what we address, that it is severed, that those ties are cut in the name of Jesus. Okay. There are two excellent books that I want to recommend to help you find and explain the spiritual roots of sicknesses and diseases. And I, I'll, I will also put that in, um, in my video in the comment section. Um, the name of the book is Healings, Healings Begins with Sanctific Sanctification of the Heart by Dr. M.K. Stridham, and then also A More Excellent Way by Pastor Henry W. Wright. And I cannot tell you guys, when I started reading, uh, reading healings begin with the sanctification of the heart, it mind blown, mind blown, because everything, she is a physician, an MD, and what she wrote blew. Oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. So I urge you all, you know, to go read. And then when you read the Bible, it's just so amazing how everything is just all aligned. Okay. And so you know, another, you know, when I was talking about when Jesus was actually healing, you know, the blind men and whatnot, that is in the book of Matthews, chapter nine, verse 27 through 30. I mean, it was by their faith, by their faith, you know, and Jesus told them, do you believe that I can do this? And they're like, yay, Lord. Right. And he says, because of your faith, he touched them. Let it be so. And their eyes were open. I mean, I am just. speechless because I'm in awe because that's what happened in my life in 2006 in 2015 2014 2015 and 2016 is when I surrendered my life and gave my life to the Lord and let me tell you when I gave my life to the Lord it became a train wreck everything just everything just went boom 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 it's kind of like the enemy and his adversaries of of the world just came at me all at once but God but God I mean there are four pillars. I believe I talked about this like two years ago. You know, your relationships with your children, your relationship in your marriage. These these are the four pillars that the enemy comes for. Relationship with your children, <coughs> your marriage, number two. Number three is your finances. Number four is your health. And if you are able to overcome every single one, and then all four pillars will fire at you all at once. Imagine that. May, mostly people don't live or outlive or able to overcome the financial circumstances in crisis. But then when you get to the health part, that's even harder. And, and this is why uh, I believe that he put this on my heart, you know, on my spirit to speak about, because we need to heal our lands in order for this whole disease this whole coronavirus, this whole COVID-19, whether it was mechanically, you know, engineered from a lab or from, you know, an animal, whatever the case may be. Guess what, y'all? Our lands are in need of healing. There's been so much bloodshed. There's been so much ugliness, sin, self, you know, selfish, unrighteousness. I mean, wickedness taking place in our world today. And those of you who are standing on rock and believing and having faith in Christ Jesus, we have to fight the good fight until all this ends, right? And also remember, we have to think about the things and how we speak over ourselves, how we speak over our lives and the words that comes out of our mouth. Because in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes, your tongue has power, has life and death, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So imagine if you're a person that is so negative and everything about your life is negative. You're cursing yourself up, up and down like you're not speaking life. You're not speaking positive over your life. So how, you're, you're like putting yourself in a bound and bondage when Jesus says you are free. You are free indeed, right? And we have to look at I me mean, re regarding um, the way uh, our, our sicknesses are now, even the diagnosis, right? When I was diagnosed, and I thank God for families or friends that had prayed for me, churches or church members that had prayed for me because all their prayers came to pass for me when I was diagnosed. 
with the big C, and I'm not going to speak it over my life because that is dead in the name of Jesus, right? And all those people that prayed for me, I don't even know all of them, but they prayed for me. And those prayers were answered because I didn't have to go through treatments. It was gone. I was tested. It was positive, And I went back for a whole plan and blah, blah, blah. And they were surprised. Even the doctor was surprised. Yes, they were surprised. And they said, oh, you. The test that we just took a couple of days ago is not the test that came back. Well, let me tell you, glory to God, to God be the glory, because he declared and decreed and heard the cries of all those who came for me that battled for me and war for me in prayer. And that's what we need to do. You need to align yourself with prayer warriors who are of God, who points you to the Bible and not points you to themselves, right? Who points you to Jesus because Jesus is the only one that carried your cross and the whole entire world's cross. And when we come through circumstances, when we are given diagnosis, we tend to accept the diagnosis instead of us run, running to our father, giving him the diagnosis, like, Father, this is what happened. You know, what do I need to do? Grab all your, the, the people that you are in aligned with that are of God to pray for you and to say, let this leave in the name of Jesus and whatever your will is for me, God, let it be so. Because don't you guys remember Job? Remember Job? Yes, I remember Job. <laughs> I remember the, uh, oh my gosh, I do remember Job. I mean, Job was, was almost perfect in God's eyes, but he was tested. His faith was tested. Every part of him was tested. So what makes you guys think that just being good, just being good is good enough for God? We have requirements. He's calling. He says, return to me and I will heal all your backsliding. And he says, when you call on me, declare that I am your Lord, thy God, and I will heal you. But do you have faith and believe to know that he is your Abba, right? Sometimes we don't even realize that when we say negative things about others, about our children, yes, we do get mad, trust and believe, been there, done that. But we're, we're, we're cursing them if we're saying negative things about them. Speak life. Speak life no matter what. No matter who has hurt you, you speak life over them. Ask God to have mercy over them. Ask God to have mercy over you, right? If he created you, why would he not heal you according to your faith? Remember the blind? There's another blind man in the book of Matthew, and the disciples asked him, like Jesus, if he was born blind, what did his parents do? Because remember, there's generational curses. There's generational blessings. We call it hereditary, right? Diseases. But we will not speak that over our children and grandchildren. We are going to cut the ties that whatever our forefathers or our ancestors have done, that none of their sins will be, you know, passed down through the bloodline. We need to sever and cut those ties in the name of Jesus. But what I'm saying is, remember the blind guy, the, the blind man, and when he put the mud, he spit in the mud, put in his eyes, and he was seeing the disciples says, well, what did his parents do wrong? And I'm here, you know, this is my version. But what did his parents do wrong? Why was he blind? And Jesus says nothing. It was for the glory of God. So always think that whatever your circumstances is, right? First, always remember. God gives you the freedom to choose. Your choices has consequences, good, bad, or indifferent. Everything you must make a choice. Just like he says, choose to follow me or choose not to follow me. There's consequences in both. One is eternal life and one is eternal torment. And I don't want to be in the smoking section and neither should any of you. And so... With that, you know, people say, so what do you do about the medical diagnosis? Well, don't accept it. If that is the way, if they told you that you were diagnosed with a terminal disease, take it to your father and ask for, for a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion. Don't just take it for what it is. It is what it is. And then, you know, and, and ponder, yes, it's hard. Easy said than done. But trust, I'm speaking from experience. I should have been dead a couple of years ago, but I'm still here. And I have aunties 
who will declare a decree that in their faith and belief and walk and repentance, confessions to Jesus Christ, they are healed and they are still here today without any medical intervention. But they did listen to what they needed to do. Okay, so please do not take my words out of context. Okay, I'm saying that you should listen to your physicians, to what they tell you, but don't accept it right off the bat. Take it to your father, get a group of prayer warrior, pray and bore for that disease that's on your test result to be gone in the name of Jesus so it can come back negative. But that's up to you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> whew, my goodness. So, wow. So the last <laughs> scripture that I'm going to leave with you is the book of James, chapter four, verse seven. And it reads, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Whenever you start to hear the negativity coming on, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Say leave. Not today, Satan. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Because that's where he attacks you and I. The battle of the mind. Your mind is in dire need. My mind always is in need of healing every day to be in Christ. Because if I'm not in Christ, this mind will definitely wander. And without God, oh my goodness gracious, where would we be? Where would we be without him? So my friends that are out there, I pray that this short message will help you with your healing, with your journey, whatnot. Search the scriptures. Align yourself with brothers and sisters to pray over you, the shepherds of God that are out there to pray with you. Stand firm, believe, and have faith. Because at the end of the day, God already gave us the victory. At the end of the day, God gave us the victory. We win at the end of this. We do. I love you all. This is Marie with Just Gorgeous TV, where let's talk, keep it real, and move forward and tune back in next week. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about the topic that I want. But then again, you know, he may just change it up on me. If you have any topics that you want me to talk about or research, and there's a whole lot of research, let me know. Email me at mariajustgorgeous.com, or you can just leave me a message right here. Okay. With that being said, bye, everybody. Love you guys.